end this episode. Do you know how many hours are in a week that you are awake? He goes, I was like, how often do you sleep? He's like, well, I'm, I sleep eight hours. I was like, okay, so you sleep eight hours. So you have a total of 112 hours to work with. So you have 16 hours of you being awake. What's happening to those remaining hours that we are not advocating for? He goes, well, I got to relax. I totally agree with you. You don't, you definitely need to relax. You definitely need to have a social life, but let's look at the number that is eye popping. It's the 17 to 14 hours of video games. Now I'm not against video games, but 17 to seven to 14 hours of video games. And we're only doing an hour to two hours of hitting. And you say, this is, I'm just, the reason I'm talking to you about this is that you said that you want to be a baseball player, that you want to succeed at this game because you have spent money. Your parents have spent money for $46 for a half hour lesson with me. That's a pretty, pretty big investment. And you've wanted to do that. Now, how do we extend that investment and make it even better than what you're getting for just the 30 minutes? Let's finish it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Closing Pitch. My name is Spiker Helms, and this is a show about people, culture, and how to create a winning lifestyle. Coming off two awesome episodes with Coach Evan Pratt. Um, I wanted to do another episode with Mr. Berkby, who is right um, across from me. And he was wondering, like, where is this topic coming from? And I, it was hard for me to explain. I said, let's just turn on the mics and see what happens. So give you guys a little bit of backstory. I've been doing lessons for since 2012, no, 2013. Mm-hmm. So I've seen a lot of players, I've seen a lot of different age groups. Mm-hmm. I've had five-year-olds. I've had all the way up to 18-year-olds. I even have college players that I work with. And... It gets to a point where there, I see a player every single week and there hasn't been much progress. And then there are other players where I see a lot of progress. And I want to try to frame out this conversation as not a complaint, but more of an observation um, for players that want to move the needle. And sometimes I think that lessons... Um, are used as a Band-Aid rather than some actual fix. And the lesson lessons in America has actually exploded. We're in a really good spot for <clears throat> teachers in this game um, across different sports. So basketball, swimming, baseball, soccer, just individual private teaching has absolutely exploded. And the reason is, is because you're basically getting a mentor. You're getting someone that has been through the fire. They have, have been through many, many um, pitfalls and have had many successes as well. And so you're able to get insight on how to actually do it. And I feel like it's the same process with learning an instrument. You're trying to learn from the best. So when having these players, I, I want to, stress that lessons are not the end all be all and the 30 minutes that you spend are 30 minutes well spent. Don't get me wrong. When you have a really good instructor, you have a really good instructor, but that skill work will not stick if you put in enough hours. Now you might be thinking, okay, well I'm putting in the hours I think I'm putting in the hours like we have baseball practice from um, on Mondays and Wednesdays and it's an hour and a half. So that's three hours. Um, I have that 30 minute minute lesson. So that's 30 minutes. So they're doing about three hours and 30 minutes. So they should be gaining skills. Now, here's the breakdown of that, though. How often is let's just say it's hitting. How often is that player in the cage during that hour and a half? actually swinging the bat 
That's where it comes down to. How many hours are you actually doing the specific skill set? And a lot of people don't think about it that way. So what I did was I had one of my players who's very talented and I like it. He has infinite potential. He's big for his age. He's athletic. He, he's swinging a wood bat, a negative three wood bat at his age too, which um, for a lot of those guys, they're swinging those D Marini hot bats. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, like, how often are you in the cage? And he did the breakdown. I gave you the breakdown. That was his breakdown. And then I said, how often are you hitting during the practice? And he goes, ooh, that's a really good question. 20 to 30 minutes maybe? So let me get this straight. So you spend 20 to 30 minutes each practice actually swinging a bat, not you sitting on the sides and waiting. So if we add all that up, technically – you have only been swinging the bat using the stuff that I've been teaching you and your coaches have been teaching you for technically an hour to maybe an hour 20. And he goes, yeah, I guess so. So does that not Mm. raise any red flags? Like, does that not say like, Hey, there's some more push here. We could have, more skill sets if we, we can keep on stacking skills faster if you able if you're able to spend maybe three hours in the cage hitting by yourself or even two or even just one and he goes well spike i don't have enough time well, well let's do the breakdown how often are you in school well from i think it's seven to three or eight to three so let's okay let's just say that's seven hours a normal work week is a 40 hour work week, right? He's like, Oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, you're, yeah, <laughs> your dad does 40 hours a week. I do 40 hours a week. Um, it it's 40 hours and school is 35 hours. So you have an extra five in there that you can, you, you have able to spend He goes, well, I have basketball practice. I'm like, okay, perfect. Really good example. How many basketball teams are you playing for? He goes two. Okay, so how many times do you practice basketball? And he goes, once a week for um, both of those teams, and then I have games on the weekend. Perfect. How long is practice? An hour and a half. All right. So where's the other hours? Where is the, where, there's, there's, more, there's more time there that you can, you can spend. And he goes, well, I have homework. How often do you do homework? And he goes, uh, probably an hour? So this is the breakdown that I have for him. So you have 35 hours of school, 12 hours of basketball, seven, and then he, I asked him about video games. How often do you play video games? Like two hours. I was like, okay, so you have seven to 14 hours of video games. You have one hour of hitting or two hours, hour and a half of hitting, five to 10 hours of homework, and then you have 14, let's just budget in some eating. So 14 hours of eating. So your total hours of activity is 74 to 86 hours. Do you know how many hours are in a week that you are awake? He goes, I was like, how often do you sleep? He's like, well, I'm, I sleep eight hours. I was like, okay, so you sleep eight hours. So you have a total of 112 hours to work with. So you have 16 hours of you being awake. What's happening to those remaining hours that we are not advocating for and he goes well i gotta relax i totally agree with you you don't you definitely need to relax you definitely need to have a social life but let's look at the number that is eye popping it's the 17 to 14 hours of video games now i'm not against video games but 17 to 7 to 14 hours of video games and we're only doing an hour to two hours of hitting. And you say, this is, I'm just, the reason I'm talking to you about this is that you said that you want to be a baseball player, that you want to succeed at this game because you have spent money, your parents have spent money for $46 for a half hour lesson with me. That's a pretty, pretty big investment. And you've wanted to do that. Now, how do we extend that investment and make it even better than what you're getting for just the 30 minutes. How can we take 
$46 and make it into um, tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold, that you're able to go out there and just dominate because you love this game. Now, if you don't love this game, you got to tell me right now and you got to tell your parents right now because there's some mixed signals here. Now, if you were just a player that came to me once and we, we yucked it up, I gave you a few advice, a few, few tidbits, some tools, and I have those guys. I love those guys. Mm-hmm. But you're a guy that has been with me consistently and you're only giving in an hour to two hours of time. What are we doing here? And his mind was absolutely just Mm -hmm. crazy. So I'm not saying that you need to be completely addicted to this game. I was addicted. I was completely addicted. I I obsessed over the game. I would spend hours upon hours by myself just hitting off of a tee. Like Jaws literally would call me crazy Mm -hmm. when I was playing. Cause I was, I'd be in the facility. I'd be there for like two hours. I'd take a break, go weight lift and come back. And then I would be back at the T again. He'd be like, you're crazy. Now I'm not saying get to that level, mm-hmm. but what I'm saying is let's expand the investment because your the parents are spending good money on these instructors. And I think that there's some room for these players to go and hit on their own and they don't need a coach. They don't need an instructor. Now you might say, well, it's too cold outside or um, there's not enough cage space. You might be right, but you do have a basement and there's nets on eBay that you can get for a fairly good price. So for me, it's a breakdown of the hours, no matter and and this is just not about baseball. This is about like what you want to do with your life. And I'm speaking to the players here is that if you want to do video games, I'm totally cool with that because there are a bunch of dudes out there that are making buku dollars on Twitch <laughs> and they're just absolutely crushing it. But if you're doing it as like a hobby and you're not you're not wanting to pursue that, then yeah, play it for a little bit, but don't get addicted to it. If you want to be a software engineer and you really love video mm-hmm. games, yeah, <clears throat> keep playing it. But if you want to pursue something that's whether that's in music, that's in theater, that's in um, a sport, that's you wanting to be part of Tesla or SpaceX and try to shoot people up into space, uh, you got you to spend more hours on that. And it goes back to the 10,000 hours um, that you need to master a skill set. Now, I agree with the Outliers book. And I also disagree with the Outliers book, and I've talked about this in the past. But the thing that I I agree with is that you have to have you have to put your time in. It can't be one of those things where oh, I jump in and I'm I'm there. Just like the Joe Burrow conversation in the mm-hmm. Super Bowl, where the reporter asked what's the what's the best advice that you can give young athletes. It's being less posting on social media about you working out and then not working out on your own in silence. Being a monk where you're completely silent and you're working on your craft and trying to make sure that you are pursuing the thing that you want to pursue. Now I just spoke for (laughs) 15 minutes and Dave has not made a conversation. Just literally staring into my eyeballs as I'm talking. What, what do you, what is your take on this? Is my, is this hypothesis and this thought process, right? Am I totally off my rails? Is it just me being the um, previous obsessed person that I am about the sport speaking? What What's going on? I think I'd frame it this way. <clears throat> I would ask the player and the parent, what's your expectation? What do you want to be? Do you want, you know, because I think every player has different expectations out of this. Is your expectation just to get involved in a sport? Okay, maybe the 30 minutes is. That's good. It's great. Totally for that. You're you're overdoing it. That's fantastic. Is your expectation to make a team, be a part of a team? And that's great. Cool. Maybe a little bit more, right? Maybe take that lesson, do a little bit more effort on it, okay? Is your expectation to be one of the best players on your team? Okay. Well, now, now we're talking about a little bit more time spent is your expectation to be one of the best players on the league that you're playing in. Whoa. Now we're talking about a lot more time. Okay. A lot more time spent on your craft. 
at what you're doing. Is your expectation to be one of the best players in your school? Now we're talking about a lot more time. Is your expectation to be a guy who goes on to play in college professionally? Do you want to be a major league player? Now we're talking about an infinite amount of time. There's so many different ways to look at it. I get that question all the time, and I I think that sometimes the expectations don't align with the time needed to actually make that happen and make that become a reality. We talk about, you know, when we've seen it a bunch in the past of players coming every week for 30 minutes, and I have these conversations all the time. I try to start off every single lesson with, well, hey, talk to me about the last week since I've seen you. You know, what have you done? You know, have you been throwing? You know, I want to know, number one, is your arm ready to throw today? But I also want to know, were you working at the stuff that we talked about? Did you do anything in practice? Like what went good? What went bad? Did you work on your own? Um, How did that go? So that that can give me a lot of answers as to what we should be working on today as well. I get a lot, a lot of answers. And even this time of the year in February where you're ramping up for the year and you're ready to be playing games in a month, I didn't really do anything. And that's okay. Probably not great from my standpoint, but well, then our expectation shouldn't be to make huge jumps. We're probably going to talk about the same things, which you in turn as a player are probably not going to like. Because in your mind, we should be progressing. We should be going on to something new. We should be making massive gains. I should be throwing three miles per hour harder. I should be doing this different, th- whatever. But the reality is you won't. You, you're, you haven't really, you, you've gained 30 minutes in one week from your math breakdown. You've gained 30 minutes. And that's better than zero minutes, better than 29 minutes. But that's all. Now, if you say, I took the information that you gave me last week, coach, and I went in my basement and I worked on it. And, you know, we were talking about, for example, keeping my front foot closed on my swing or whatever it might be because I open up and I really, I really, really worked at that. I like every night I went home and uh, I hit a hundred balls off the tee and I worked on that specific thing. And I'll be like, great, let's see how it looks. And boom, you got it fixed. Awesome. Guess what we get to do now as instructors? Progress. We get to move on to the next topic. It's an evolution. It is, it's a constant evolution. There's never an end in sight. I've never once gotten to a player and been like, you've done it. <laughs> you've completed everything I possibly have for you. And now there's nothing else I can possibly say to you because you are the most complete baseball player ever created and there's nobody that's better than you. That, that will never happen. But we get to keep progressing. We get to keep adding on. The players who are the self-starters, and again, it's to me, we go back to this. Not every player has to be that way. There's so many different experiences in this game. Some Sometimes just making your 12U team and building friendships and having that seasonal experience is, is all that player needs, and all that family needs or wants, and that's great. Let's get you there. But if the expectation is to get further than that, then I think it's understandable that the player needs to understand the time that's needed to get those goals, to obtain those goals. So I think it's just understanding that. And that, yeah, I mean, you come in once a week, and I've had players where we progress every single week. And in one year, two years, three years down the road, they are just completely different individuals. And I've had players that come in once a week or once every couple weeks and Two years down the road, we're talking about the exact same things. That's okay, too, if you're understanding that that's what we're going to do. And it's just, what are your expectations out of this? I think it's also understanding the services that are involved when it comes to youth sports and teaching. Um, I think from a season standpoint, being able to learn from a coach, um, especially a dad figure, is, is super important. Um, I also think that baseball camps are extremely important because it's a more of a group setting and you're playing the game and there's going to be some type of teaching, but with private lessons, that's where that's the most interesting service out of all of them because it's a one-on-one intimate session where it's just literally, I have to literally be on my game for 30 minutes straight. I can't be off my game for 30 minutes and that's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. 
So I have to teach at, I have to have a continuous conversation for if it's, if I have four hours of lessons, it's four hours of continuous conversation. Now with a player, I think the question is what's the player really need? Are they, is it more of an introductory? Then yeah, camps and group sessions are perfect. Um, if it's for a lesson, maybe it's to see if they do like lessons. But I think the ones that I, I'm concerned about is also the ones that have continuous lessons over and over and over again, and they get frustrated. That's what that's where this podcast really stems from. This episode is the guys that are super frustrated that they're not progressing, um, and they've they've seen an instructor over and over and over and over again. It, the instructor can only provide information, yeah. and they can point out certain areas of uh, mechanical flaws. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the driver and the players, the horse, they're the horse and the driver. The, the coach is literally just the mentor. He's the consultant. I can take you to water, but you got to be able to drink that water. Well, that's what I, I try to impress upon that to the players and the parents specifically all the time is that <clears throat> this, this 30 minute lesson or this practice or whatever we're, we're going on, it means absolutely nothing if you don't understand why we're doing it. If you cannot verbatim respond back to me as to why this mechanical adjustment or this drill or why we're doing something different is going to benefit you, then then it's a waste of time. It really is. Because there's no way then once you leave that lesson and you so-called go work on it on yourself, there's no way you can actually do it right. You won't understand it. You'll just go back to doing all the same things that you used to do because it's habit. You have to understand, yet you're correct. You're paying for that person's individual experiences and knowledges and knowledge. So now that person, like for me and you, we have 10 plus years of coaching underneath our belts. We have 20 years of playing underneath our belts. We've X umpteen amount of hours underneath our belts with this game not saying we're the best at it but we got a lot there's probably a lot of times that i've had i've been in that player's shoes and i've worked on that exact thing and here's how you can get out of it and here's what you can do but if you don't understand why you're doing it and how it's going to benefit you what good is it that's the player you're talking about that continuously shows up and we're talking about the same thing because i guarantee you don't understand it there's no chance you understand it and you can tell from a player that really wants, like, is engulfing the information is if I'm able to ask an, a simple idea, like, hey, I've explained this drill, I explain it three or four times, and then I'm like, all right, let's do this drill. And they're like, oh, what's that drill? That's when I know that the player wants just reps. He just wants to hit. That's all he wants to do. And that's when I start talking to the parents, like, hey, use me once every month. Use me once every two months, but he just wants to hit. He just wants to get in the cage, throw a ball in the machine and hit. And which is awesome. That's what you need to be doing. You need to be playing this game consistently and you being able to get as many reps as you can in front of a machine or in front of a person throwing or doing soft toss, doing mm. whatever. That's what they want. They want to see what the ball's doing. Yeah. That, that, that's the initial reaction that they want. Then as they start getting more reps, that's when they're going to get more interested. Like, how do I hit it farther? How do I hit it harder? That's where the instructor comes in. So I, I, I think this is also an episode for instructors too, is recognize what, what players you have. And if you're, if you're saying a drill and you've said it three or four times and you say, Hey, we're going to do open face today. And that player doesn't know what open face mm -hmm. is. That's a, that's a they're direct, yeah, it, yeah, that's a direct signal of <clears throat> talk to the parents and say, Hey, I love your kid, but, he just wants to be in the cage and hit. And I think you spending forty forty six dollars for thirty minutes, I think you could you could get a cage for half the price and just put balls in the machine and that's all he wants. He wants to hit and he wants to get your reaction. He wants to see like, hey, did my dad like that? Did my mom like that? What'd you think of me doing this? That's what he wants or she wants. Yeah, I so for me personally, I can always tell when a player's into it and when a player's actually taking the information and running with it 
and this is always on a different time frame because some some adjustments are either easier than others. But I can always tell when that player comes back to me after performing the issue wrong again and goes, "Oh, I felt that. Yeah, oh, that's 100%. I got it." Because you now know that that player's done a hundred, two hundred, a thousand reps focusing on that one feeling of change, and now they understand that oh that that's the issue again. That's when they make the change, and, and then they do that over and over and over. And you and you don't get to that point of um, curiosity without experiencing um, a lot of swings or sure. experiencing the thing. Like example. Um, you have to have an introductory. So I always think about it as instruments. So the best thing um, that has happened um, when I was younger was I was introduced to, do you remember the recorders that they give you? You, you never had a recorder? Maybe, I, I don't know. It's like a little flute thing. Oh yeah, no, yeah, everyone had yeah. it, yeah. So that introduced me to instruments and I had no idea what I was doing and you, it was only like three little buttons yep. and it was cool because I could make some sounds off of it and I would play with that thing all the time. Sure. And then it got me into when the band came available for my grade school, I was all in. I was mm-hmm. like, I want to do an instrument. I just yeah. want to, I just want to do it. I sucked at instruments by the way. I'm not very good, but it got me introduced to it. And then I wanted private lessons from that. But it wasn't until I started playing with my saxophone and um, seeing what I could do with it, uh, going to the classes and the group sessions that we had at school. And then finally, one day I said to my mom, I was like, hey, I want to do some private lessons. I want to learn how to do this thing a little bit more. And then I, then I kind of got tailored away from it. And then yep. that's, what, that's what life is. But I think that's a really good example of from the sports side is that you got to put in those, those minutes and those hours and get introduced to the game and then go to group sessions and then do it on your own with your own family or your friends. And then, and then start adding in that private instructor. Um, that's where I think that it, it benefits the person the most. Well, and, and yeah, I'll, I'll stop beating the same drum, but it, again, it, it also comes down to the communication from the parent and the player with each other of what is our expectation of this. Just don't go blindly into it. I mean, that's not bad. There's nothing bad about going out and trying lessons or going out and trying uh, to find a person of expertise and get information from. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with doing that over and over and over again is if the expectations don't align with the work ethic. That's where I think the problem falls because then you're going to be angry at the instructor. You're going to be angry as a player because you're not getting the expected results that you think that 30 minute, that hour, that practice should re- should produce. Because the last thing for a really good instructors is they don't they don't want you to waste your money, and they're not going to suck you in and just keep trying to. Because it's not suck fun for them. No, it's it's not. It's, trust, it, trust me, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not worth the money you make on it. Yep. To have a player or a parent who's either a disinterested in being there or b has false expectations of what that should produce because then there's no way I can tell I, I can there's no way I can say or promise that hey because of this lesson you're going five for ten this weekend big guy this is gonna happen for you there's no way I can say that if I could uh, trust me I'll charge a lot more uh, I promise we should just start a prediction business like, where we just say yeah you're, you're doing bat flips all weekend when you're going five for ten with yeah. uh, three jacks it's just like there's there's no way I can do it. And if you, by the way, if you hear that, that's a snake oil guy. That, that doesn't, that doesn't exist. So, um, lay out the expectations, understand what you're doing it for. And if it's just to get involved in the game, great. If it's to become, you know, the, the set on the team, great. If it's to become a guy who's going to play in, in the next level, great, but understand there's a progression to this thing. Um, there's just make sure your expectations align with your, with the time you're putting in. Guys, that's this episode of The Closing Pitch. Dave, do you want to give them the big announcement? What's happening this summer? Oh, now uh, us coaching again together? There's going to be the hotel more, tour? There's going to be more Holiday Inn episodes yeah. coming in the future. Yeah, we're back on the hotel tour. So. Yeah. I might just bring the uh, yeah. podcasting equipment with us. I think I'm going to get a big bag Absolutely. and then carry it in. And then we can just, instead of us holding the mics... 
get another camera for us. It's going to be great. Absolutely. Make sure the acoustics is right in the Holiday Inn. So. Yeah, we'll have to ask for that specialty room that they have, right? Yeah. I actually think they have, like, each hotel room has their own <laughs> podcasting room for just in case the That's right. podcasting crew comes in. <laughs> It'll be fun. All right, guys. Well, if you're in Indianapolis, Atlanta, or Kansas City, we will be in those towns this <laughs> summer. So if you if we want to do a live session in the hotel lobby, yeah, come on just, down. Uh, yeah, just come on down and we'll make it happen. We'll bring an extra mic. Yeah, we'll bring an extra mic. Maybe have a guest appearance or two. That'd there be fun. It is. There it is. <laughs> All right, guys. That's this episode of the closing pitch. Please give us a five star review. I'm still tailoring with like the idea of like doing a new introductory song. Just from an editing standpoint, I hear the same song over and over and over again. Send us in uh, your requests. Let oh, us know. Let, do, let us requests. know if you want a new song and if you want one. What happens? What happens if they choose like a children's song? Then there it is. That's what we gotta live with for the next <laughs> twenty episodes. <laughs> All right, guys. We will catch you later. See you guys.